Welcome, everybody, to Spoonie's Celtic Show. I think we are up to episode six, but don't hold me to that. I'm flying from the hip. Today, if you read the description or the title, and I'm sure you probably did, I'm going to be trying to figure out the impossible question. Who is the Celtics' third best player? And real quick, before I get into that, I'm just going to hit the... Uh, Warriors game real quick, something that has not been talked about, right? We've talked about the smart plays, you know, kick was weird. Don't think the dive was dirty, whatever. Jason Tatum played pretty bad and he still had like a 26 point double double. That's progress, right? That's progress. That's good. That's very nice. That's a nice win. I know Curry was hampered. Draymond was Draymond. Uh, but, you know, after Curry left, we took over, but, you know, he was one for four at the time, and that was in deep into the second quarter, so we were playing well. It's not like they were blowing us out, and all of a sudden we ch- made a huge comeback after Curry left, so very nice win. I'm recording this well past 4.46 p.m. on a Friday, uh, so the Kings game will be on in a few hours. I'm hoping we come away with a win. It would be very disappointing if we do not, but... Sacramento is kind of sneaky, tough, so we will see. All right, that brings us to our regularly scheduled programming. And I will say I'm going on vacation next Friday, so it's possible there will not be an episode next week. I'll see if I can sneak one in, even just a short one during the week, but we'll see. Okay, who is the Celtics' third best player? Most important we got to trim down the candidates. And unfortunately, Aaron Nismas hurt, so I can't make the argument for him. Uh, But let's get into our candidates. I'm going to give my best, what is it, Bruce Buffer impersonation here. All right, the first candidate. Standing at 6'4", 220 pounds from Oklahoma State, the starting point guard of the Boston Celtics, Marcus smart (laughs) that that didn't quite hit all right i mean maybe we'll drop that um we'll try it one more time well one more time all right the second candidate standing at six foot nine 237 pounds from texas a&m rob william i didn't say his position because is he the center is he the power forward I truly do not know. Nobody knows. I'm not even sure Rob knows. The third candidate. The sixth man. Standing at six foot four, 190 pounds. Kind of skinny, huh? 190 pounds. Derek White, the Buffalo from Colorado. All right, D White. Yeah, new addition. We'll see how he stacks up. I will say throughout this whole thing, We're going to have some asterisks on some Derek White numbers just because the sample size is so small. And our last candidate, six foot nine, 240 pounds from the University of Florida, the 35 year old timeless wonder, Al Horford. All right. I hope you bared, but I hope you didn't turn this off immediately when I started doing that. If so, thank you for sticking around. So, Real quick, what I'm going to do, unlike the Tatum episode where I got really into like the play type data and things like that, I don't think that's really useful here because all these guys, other than Smart and White, they're very comparable, but how do you compare Marcus Smart to Robert Williams? How do you compare him to Al Horford? How do you compare Derek White to those two? It's it's seemingly impossible, right? So what I'm going to do is these four guys are high-end, high-level role players. So what do we want role players to do? We want them to play defense. That's one. Most important thing on this team, frankly. Two, we want them to move the ball, right? You want your role players passing, getting the ball to your best players, assisting, and just keeping it moving, right? Okay. And three, you want them to score efficiently. Right? They're not going to have 20 shots a night like Tatum. They're not going to have 18 shots a night like Jalen Brown. Or currently, our third leading shot taker is still Dennis Schroeder at 12 a game. <laughs> so they're not going to take shots like Dennis Schroeder. Probably, you know, a bad thing, frankly. When Schroeder was on the team, we probably wanted somebody else shooting. But nonetheless, 
That's what I'm looking at. Can you defend? I think we know the answer for all four of these guys. Are you moving the ball? Okay. And are you making the most of your opportunities? And then last thing I'm going to do is take a look at those impact stats, those overall impact, you know, the stuff that kind of captures the little things. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, though, is why don't we just get a lay of the land here, look at these guys' traditional stats, just the way to set the table a little bit. Smart's averaging 12.2 on 42, 33, 80. Horford, 10.2 on 45, 31.7, 84. Rob, 10 on 72, really 73. He has not taken a three this year. And a very solid 72% from the line. Derek White on the Celtics, 9.9. .9, so effectively 10. This hurts to say. 38% from the floor. 22.6 from three. And a very solid 81.8 .8 from the line. Smart is getting solid 3.9 rebounds for a, uh, for a point guard. Al is at 7.6. Rob, one of the best rebounders in the league at this point with 9.7. Derek White, 3.4. And then assists, Smart leading the pack at 5.7. Al with 3.3. Rob, 2.0. And Derek White, 3.0. Okay, so that's the lay of the land. None of these guys have spectacular counting stats, but they're all very solid. I mean, Rob's one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. So um, that's that's you know, where we're at with, with these guys, traditional stats. That's why we got to look a little deeper. Nothing really jumps out for any of these guys. Okay. Let's jump to the defensive numbers and I'm going to defense first because I think really it's hard to separate these dudes on defense. They're all awesome defensive players and they're all that good. Smart and white are pretty comparable, but time Lord Horford, they do different things. They're good at different things. So it's tough to kind of compare and contrast. But nonetheless, we're going to take a quick look. Defensive rating. I don't really love this stat. All of their defensive ratings are insanely good. Derek White's is the best at 100.3. Then Horford at 102.4. Time Lord at 103.4. Smart 104.4. So what does that tell me? We have an amazing defensive team. I mean, that's really like, and th these four guys are a big part of that. And White, small sample size theater here with Derek White. Like he's joined the team when we were in the middle of a hot streak. We weren't giving up any points to anybody ever. So his defensive rating, he's a part of that. He's definitely a part of that. I'm not saying he's not, but, you know, I don't take much away from the fact that his defensive rating is, you know, 2.4 points better than Horford. I think, you know, this is just a wash, so I'm going to move on quickly. All right, stocks per 100, and that's steals and blocks per 100 possessions, and I'm doing that to regulate for minutes played because White plays you know, under 30 minutes a night, Smart plays a lot. So when I can, because I can't always, I'm either going to regulate these stats by 100 possessions, which is my preferred method, or thir per 36 minutes, which, yeah, you know, that's kind of the same i just think it's a little sloppier but nonetheless all right so some things are going to jump out at you and it's all of these dudes get a bunch of turnovers and blocks they get a bunch of steals and blocks per 100 possessions so smart actually in last he's at three stocks time lords at 5.1 which pause that's absolutely absurd. that is a crazy number he either blocks your shot or steals the ball on 5% of the other team's possessions. <laughs> I mean, what? He's a center. That ain't right. And you, you won't be surprised that most of those are blocks. I think he's at about four blocks per 100 possessions, which is, at, I mean, it's just absurd. Um, Smart's 2.4 steals, so he barely blocks shots. Derek White's an interesting one. He's in second here at 3.5 stocks per 100. And his are actually like dead even, 1.8 steals and 1.7 blocks. So, I mean, we heard when we got Derek White that he's this block sh shot blocking, block shotting maven for a guard. And the numbers kind of speak to that, man. 3.5 blocks or steals for a point guard. That's, that's crazy. That's really good. And then Horford, 
you know, we're going to look at, there's going to be some old man numbers here for Horford, but he's at 3.3, very respectable. Most of those are blocks. I think it's 2.2 or 2.4 blocks per 100. Um, and, you know, he picks up a steal here and there. It's not bad. Not bad. So, again, Time Lord, at least from, like, the defensive playmaking side, you know, are you turning people over? Are you swatting shots at the rim? Time Lord's out to an early lead, and I don't think that's really surprising at all, really. Uh, that's what I would expect. Time Lord's a defensive playmaker. Smart is just kind of hurt by the fact he doesn't block shots. You know, he's got by far the highest steal number, like by far one of the best in the league. So, you know, that's just who Marcus is. Okay, next stat. Defensive field goal percentage difference. And this is the stat that says, how much worse do these guys shoot when you're guarding them? So Smart is going to grade out the worst here, but he has by far the smallest amount of field goal attempts. And I don't have those numbers for you. I probably should have grabbed them. You're going to have to take my word for it. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. So Smart's only minus 0.4. Time Lord way out in front at minus 6.8. Derek White, very solid, minus 2.4. Small sample size again, but White's a good defender. I mean, I don't have any reason to question that number. Minus 2.4 probably seems about right for how good Derek White is on defense. And then Al, pretty legit, minus 4.7. So Time Lord way out in front with the 6.8. Then Al then white, then smart. And here's what I'll say. Big men always grade out better in this stat, unless they're bad, you know, unless they're like Andrea Bargnani. You know, that happens, right? They're huge. It's hard to shoot over a fucking seven-foot-tall guy, right? It's obvious. Um, and another thing I will say for a bit of context is Marcus Smart draws the most difficult assignment every time he's on the floor, short of like Denver or something where, you know, the center, Embiid, but for the most part, if there's a like-sized player out there, even bigger guys, you know, Smart's probably guarding them. So the fact that he's holding guys under their field goal percentage, it's pretty good. I mean, it just goes to the fact that he's guarding, real, you know, Luca a lot, and he's guarding Steph Curry. And then when Curry gets hurt, he moves on to Clay Thompson. You know, he we're asking a lot from him. And I think that's a bit of context because I do think Smart is, you know, full bias here. I think Smart's the best defender of this group, but the numbers don't totally show that. Well, they get, they'll get they get there a little bit. Okay, so deflections per 36. I love this stat. You know, per 36 minutes of you play, how many balls do you deflect? Do you get in the passing lanes? Are you knocking shit out of people's hands? And... You're not going to believe this, but Marcus Smart way out in front in this stat. I mean, that's what he's made his money on, right? Just ripping people and knocking things, making life difficult for the for the offense. Smart's at 3.2 deflections per 36. Derek White's going to be in second here at 2.5. Then Time Lord, 1.7. And then this is an old man Al Horford stat down there at 1.2. <laughs> 1.2 deflections a game, which, hey, it's harder for bigs. Um, there, So I will actually say, I think that Rob number is very impressive because he's not usually in the primary action, right? We've had all this talk about Rob's moved onto the four man so he can roam and block shots and do what he wants. Horford's in that primary pick and roll. You'd think he's, you know, deflecting pocket passes and, knocking the ball out of like ball handlers hands or making it difficult on him. Numbers don't really show that. And Rob's just, he's just a machine man at playmaking. He's just an absolute machine as a playmaker. He really is. Um, so yeah, the returns on that. I mean, Marcus Smart's just a menace. He's an absolute menace at Derek white, pretty big menace too. Rob for his position. Great at it. And Horford, you know, fine, whatever. 1.2. All right, the ultimate hustle stat. The amount of loose balls you recover per 36. And why I want to talk about deflections and loose balls goes back to my original point off the rip. These guys are role players. They need to do the little things to bring value, right? And part of the little things is getting on the floor and getting loose balls. 
So per 36 minutes, smart 1.3. It's a great number. It's a great number. But it's only second because Time Lord's at 1.4, which is pretty wild. Uh, and then Derek White at 1.1. And then Horford, old man stat, 0.8. 0.8. Not bad, Al. I mean, that's not that bad. But uh, so what's that show us? I'm not sure it shows us a ton, frankly, other than Time Lord, sneaky, sneaky good at grabbing loose balls and smart, great at it. White, pretty good. Horford, you know, okay, fine. Uh, they, these guys all hustle. I don't think that was a question coming in at all. So, okay. The last numbers I've got here for you is their points per possession percentile, right? So where they land amongst the league in points they give up per possession on isolations. And here's why I grabbed ISOs. We switch a ton. Our entire defense is angled around getting teams to try to take our players in isolation. So you've got to be good at stopping isolations if you want to be a if you want to play on the Celtics. Period. So Smart's numbers are absurd here. Absurd. He's in the 88th percentile, but his sample size is low. He's only defended defended 34 isolations and you know if you're watching on youtube i used air quotes but if you're not i'm using air quotes because that's a low number obviously he's defended more than that isolations but the guy's got to shoot right that's what this number's tracking it's pretty it's fairly flawed but nonetheless the guy's got to shoot People don't get shots up against Marcus Smart in isolation. And when they do, they don't go in. Like that, what more value could you want out of your point guard as a defender, right? Like he gets switched on to anybody. And guess what? You don't score or you can't even get a shot up. Pretty good. So, like, some of these numbers are going to be so inflated. Uh, Like, Time Lords defended 111 ISOs. That's a lot, right? 54th percentile defending him. Very good for a center. Very good. So Derek White, I've gotten two numbers up here. He's in the third percentile. Absolutely terrible. Like got like me out there. You know, like me trying to go against Steph Curry and I now nah, I would be zeroth. Per, is there negative percentiles? That's what I would be in. But third percentile, only on 15 as a Celtic. And then his stats as a spur. Actually, very similar to Smart's. Only 43 isolations defended, 98th percentile. So White's an elite isolation defender. He's had a kind of a rough go of it as a Celtic. I think part of that is he's getting switched on to bigger guys as a Celtic. And, you know, he's fouling a lot. He is fouling an awful lot uh, when people get ISOed onto him. I'm sorry, my cat is absolutely destroying me all right we're back so damn it cat stop it oh my god enough go get all right where was i oh, jesus all right here we go <laughs> anyway so derek white <laughs> derek white great numbers as a spur terrible as a celtic truth's probably somewhere in between um, you know, he's getting beat up by bigger guys when he switch, uh, switches on to them as a Celtic. That doesn't happen to Marcus Smart. That's why he's such a valuable weapon on the defensive end. Um, Horford, Horford's numbers are weird. And I think the, I'll explain the reason they're weird. So he's defended 162 isolations, which is a lot, man. That's several a game. People are trying to take Horford in isolation all the time. But he's in the 76th percentile of defending them. He's very good at defending them. And here's why I think that's happening. Al, a lot of the time. So first of all, one, our defense is awesome. Like Jalen, for all his faults as a defender, is great as an ISO defender, right? Great one-on-one on-ball defender. Obviously smart. Tatum's awesome. Time Lord is really hanging out in the corner a lot. Al is in that primary pick-and-roll action all the time and we switch so al gets that primary ball handler in a switch all the time and 
you got to attack somebody, right? And people think 36, 35-year-old Al Horford's the guy I'm going to attack. Doesn't work so great. I mean, he's 76 percentile, but I think that's why he's defending so many is you got to attack somebody, right? You got to try and make a shot on someone. And, you know, frankly, Al's the guy they go after. Um, and you know what? It's not working. And guess what? We have a completely elite defense because there's nobody to, to, to attack. And the guys you do decide to attack are very, very good at defending it. Okay. So, takeaways from the defensive numbers, I think going in, I figured there'd be not much to separate these guys. I still feel that way. I mean, how do, how do you parse this stuff? Like, all these numbers show us is these guys are all good at different stuff. Yeah. Did I just waste 20 minutes of your time? Maybe, and I apologize if I did. But it's nice to know the numbers back up the eye test, right? Smart's stealing everybody. Time Lord's blocking everybody. White's, you know, probably not elite at anything, but very good at everything. Um, and, you know, Horford, solid as hell. Just incredibly solid at, in every single way other than diving for loose balls. But he's 35. We don't want him doing that anyway. So. Um, all right, next thing we're going to jump to is, remember I said we're going to go, we want to make sure these guys are moving the ball, and we want to make sure they're scoring efficiently. So let's go to moving the ball here. And these are not perfect stats, but nonetheless, a big part of moving the ball and a big part of being a role player is not turning it over. So... The reason I don't have like passes per game up and things like that is Horford and Time Lord just operate in such different ways than Smart and White, right? Smart always has the ball. Of course, he's going to have more passes than Rob Williams or Horford or even Derek White, right? So let's isolate assist to turnover ratio, right? Because that's saying how effective are your passes compared to how much you're hurting the team with the ball in your hands, right? Are you making dangerous passes without turning it over? Because that's very important. And then assist percentage, which again, regulates for 100 possessions, lets us know, regardless of how much these guys have the ball, are they effective at generating shots for their teammates, their better teammates like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown? Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube, I have a very fancy, I'm using that word sparingly, I'm using that word probably incorrectly, frankly, a very fancy line graph with assist percentage and assist turnover charted out on it. So let's hit up assist percentage first. Smart's going to jump way out here, 23.6%, which is a very good, very good assist percentage. It's probably about league average for a point guard, like pretty solid. Um, and obviously Smart's value comes in different ways. The fact that he can pass and is a good passer is super important for how great he is on defense. But nonetheless, he's way better than the rest of these guys at assist percentage. Time Lord's down to 9.6 assist percentage, which he's a play finisher this year. I, it was a little higher last year, I believe, especially in that kind of second half of the season when he was moved to the starting lineup. So that's fallen off. And I think part of that's just by design. We all know Time Lord's a great passer, um, but he's not getting a ton of assists this year for, you know, I think legitimate reasons of just him being in a different role this year. So Derek White, very solid, 17.7. And then Al's the interesting, the, uh, these Al stats, man, we sleep on Al. We're, going, we're sleeping on Al. 15.9% assist percentage. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the assist to turnover ratio too. Um, so for a center, for a big, that's a ridiculously good number. Ridiculously good number. 16% for a center. A guy who you know, doesn't touch a ton of the ball. It's not like we're featuring him on offense, but man, he's making the right pass more often than he's not. And... As we jump to assist to turnover ratio here, he's not turning it over ever. Al leads the pack in assist to turnover ratio, 3.28. Almost three and a half assists per turnover. 
That's what you want out of a role player. Generating good looks. Never turning it over. What more could you want out of a center? Like, that's awesome. That's amazing, right? Derek White's going to come up in second here at three. If you listen to uh, my episode last week about the Derek White effect, where, you know, conclusion was he's hurting the offense with his shooting, but his passing and his low turnover number is really, you know, it's, it's a good sign for the future. If his shot comes around, comes around he's going to be a really really useful piece for us so um right now he's hurting the offense but it's solely due to him just never making shots ever ever 22.6 from three yikes um but he's at three assists per turnover that's great for your six man that's awesome smart 2.71 which is an incredible number for how much he has the ball i would probably say that's the most impressive number. Him and Horford are probably tied for the most impressive number if you're just looking at roll. You know, it's not like Al has to run the primary pick and roll, right? Like, Smart's doing that a bunch all the time. So that 2.71 assist to turnover ratio, is it's, it's wonderful. It's a great number. And then Time Lord actually pretty far down at 1.9. Like, there's a big gap between Time Lord and the rest of these guys. So... You know, I I never really thought this, but it kind of this kind of tells me that Time Lord's not he's turning it over a little bit too much for how little he has the ball. Um and part of that's probably some of the crazy ass passes he throws and um just you know, these numbers are very fungible when you don't have a ton of the ball and he doesn't have a ton of the ball. So, I would say if we're drawing conclusions from these numbers, I think you got to say Smart and Horford on the passing side are tied for first, then Derek White, and then Time Lord and last, which I actually am a little surprised about. But nonetheless, like all four of these guys are plus passers. Um, so that's that's a big part of why it really is. Okay, so third thing we want to look at, like I said. You want your role players making the most of the possessions they get, right? You don't want them taking 20 shots. You want them being efficient with 10 shots. So again, I'm going to try and just do some analysis about role and who's got the more impressive numbers, because if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that Rob Williams' numbers are absolutely nuts. Uh, at least as far as efficiency goes, but he's also by far the most limited offensive player. So, all right. First up, true shooting percentage. Smart has dug his true shooting percentage out of the basement. I mean, he was god awful to start the year, and now he's up to basically league average at 54.5%. And Smart takes the most shots, of all these guys. So that's very important that he's at least league average efficient. Rob 73.8, which I believe is at least he's at least top five in the league. I think he might be leading the league in true shooting percentage. 73.8% true shooting percent. I mean, it's just a nutty number, but all he does is dunk and take layups and maybe a couple mid ranges throughout the season. So It's not crazy to me. You know, it's like you kind of got to take that number with a grain of salt when you're trying to evaluate how these guys score as like third, fourth, fifth options. And I mean, Rob's awesome. That's huge that he can score that efficiently. But it's not like you can throw the ball to him with 10 seconds left, five seconds left. You can kind of do that with smart. You kind of can. I mean, hey, may not be the most efficient shot. But there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. Um, Okay, the ugly stuff. Derek White, 48.4 true shooting percentage. If you're not familiar with this number, true shooting percentage league average this season is about 55%. Derek White has quite literally been one of the most inefficient high-minute players in the league on the Celtics. Flat. Period. Horrible, 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 horrible efficiency. 
terrible. 48.4 is bad. You're not going to get better for Darren. Big Al. Pretty good. I said it. We're sleeping on Al, man. Al is making a case. Al is making a case for the third best player. 55.8. Above league average. He takes a ton of threes for his position. His finishing is okay. You know, he's low volume. He's low volume. I think he takes like seven or eight shots a game. Okay. You know, that's not a lot. That's nothing, frankly. That's like completely nothing. But nonetheless, like, he's pretty damn efficient when he takes his shots. Yeah, Al's at 8.5 field goals attempt per game. And Smart, like I said, he's at 10. Derek White's at 9.2. You got to chill, bro. Got to chill. And then Rob's way down there at 6.1. So, um, yeah, Horford, you know, taking an okay number of shots, 8.5 is not nothing. And he's slightly above league average in efficiency. And considering his shot profile is so important that he can make threes as a big, it's so important. Um, I, that's valuable, man. I like. Going into this, I had my mind made up, and I'll tell you who I thought was going to come out as our third best player at the end here, but man, it's hard to ignore Al. It's hard to ignore him. All right, so effective field goal percentage. And if you listened last week, I'm kind of giggling because I kept saying efficiency. Uh, I said it like 10 times, and then at the end, after Ben edits these for me, shout out Ben, he texts me, he's like, hey man, you're saying efficiency field goal percentage. I think it's effective, unless that's a different stat I'm not aware of. And I was just like, no, nah, I'm just dumb, dude. I'm just dumb. Effective field goal percentage. So these are going to actually track uh, smarts. Okay, so real quick. Let me tell you the difference between true shooting and effective field goal percentage. True shooting, in the way it's calculated, takes into account free throws. Okay, so free throws are super valuable for efficiency because it does not count as a field goal attempt, but it obviously counts as points for you, right? That's why Harden, his shooting percentages were never that great in Houston, but his true shooting was always absurd. So effective field goal percentage does not. It's just about what it does is basically account for threes being worth more. So the better three-point shooter you are, it's going to ha really help your effective field goal percentage. So it's like if you make a three, it's like 1.5 field goals made per field goal attempt. If the, I hope that makes sense. But really, that's the difference. Effective field goal percentage does not care about free throws. True shooting does. I like true shooting better. Uh, I just think it's a... Well, true shooting is a better measure of how efficient overall you are as a scorer and effective field goal percentage is really just about how good are you at making shots if that makes any sense at all and i really hope it does so uh you're gonna see this dichotomy because smart and horford had very close one about one percent difference of true shooting it's it's a little bigger this size about two and a half actually in al's favor um, here, so smarts at fifty point two percent. That's fine. It's like probably I think a little under league average, right around the league average. That's okay. I mean, smarts known as an inefficient chucker. These numbers are not telling me that at all. They're telling me he's been just fine, just fine. Rob again, ridiculous seventy two point nine percent. I mean, again, he's just not taking shots, right? He's just dunking and laying it up. Very valuable for what Rob does. He's got a very important role on the team, but it's a limited role. Derek White. Oh, dog. 43.4. <laughs> oh, man. You got to stop. Well, you can't stop shooting, but God, they got to start going in for my own sanity, for my sanity, bro. <laughs> they got to start going in, Derek, please. Because he can't stop. If he's open, he's got to take it, man. And he's been like a... 32, 33, 34% three-point shooter his whole career. Please just start making him, Derek. And then Al, 52.8%. Very good. I think that goes to his shot profile being heavy on the threes, which is fine. 
He's got to take threes. We need that spacing if we're going to run double bigs. And Al has been like just good enough at making threes. And in the second half of the season, he's been totally, I think he's like 35, 36% in the second half of the season. So Al's been great, man, especially in the second half. And again, we're, we might be, we might be sleeping on Al. We might be sleeping on Al. Um, Okay. So. The last thing I want to present is points per 100 possessions. So, again, this is trying to regulate for how much you play. Because, obviously, Smart plays the most. And he takes, actually, per 100 possessions, Derek White dwarfs him in the number of shots he takes per 100. But, nonetheless, so this is trying to show, like, okay, it's it's not super useful to look at points per game with these guys because they have different roles and blah, blah. So this is regulating like volume and efficiency, right? Per 100 possessions could be over one and a half games, could be over three. How many points are you scoring? Smart, 18.1. That's fine. That's fine. Rob, 16.4. He's going to be last. Derek White, and this is this is scary. Derek White's actually in first here at 19.3. He's taking a lot of shots <laughs> when he's on the court. Man, he's taking a lot of He's out there gunning when he's on the court because he ain't efficient. So it's not like he's getting them in. It's not like his volume's low and he just doesn't miss, right? Like Rob is the guy with a super, like his 16.4 is actually pretty crazy for only taking six shots. Like his rate of shooting when he's on the court is like nothing, right? It's nothing. Derek White's is not nothing, and he's super inefficient, which is not ideal. Um, so he's a 19.3. That's a good number. It's not good in the ways that he's getting that number, right? We'll say. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> We'd prefer he gets that 19.3 a little differently. And then again, Al, 17.2. You know, point behind smart, solid, just straight up solid. Okay, so defense, that's a wash. Okay. Passing, smart and Horford, some some order at the top, then Derek White, then Rob. This is really hard, but man, I hope you all don't yell at me. I think I got to give it to Al. <laughs> And I will tell you, I did not think that go. I think I got to give it to Al. And then I'd say Rob and right behind Rob, like right, right behind him. A right. oh, virtual tie for second with Smart. And then Derek White. Like, you're out of the running, bro. Like, I'll just be honest with you, dog. Like, you're out of the running, even though these last stats I'm going to look at. Um are actually going to make the case for Derek White. He's out of the running. He's just been too inefficient as a Celtic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Derek. I like you. I like your game. Please start making shots. But you are completely out of the running. <laughs> okay. Last thing we're going to take a look at is my favorite. The impact metrics, right? Okay. What effect do these guys have on the team when they're playing? Overall, big picture. Get these crappy ass efficiency, true shooting, assist percent. Get that out of my face. Boil this down to a number for me and tell me how good these guys are. Okay, so Derek White's going to grade out. There's one number. Well, okay, we'll just walk through it. Why am I jumping the gun here? Why am I jumping the gun? But, yo, Al, Al, net rating. How much do we outscore the other team when this guy's on the court? Smart, Horford, and Time Lord are in a virtual tie. 8.8 for Smart, 8.5 for Time Lord, 8.4 for Horford. Derek White's first at 12.3. Small sample size theater. I, am, I would actually like completely discount this number for Derek White, frankly. I mean, it's just such a small sample size. It doesn't matter. It, I'm sorry, but it doesn't. And... Smart, Time Lord, Horford, they all play together, so it's tough to really parse out who's contributing more when they're all playing together, and they're all like virtually the same number, so net rating, not helpful, we're just going to move on. Okay, on-off net rating. 
what is the team's net rating? How much do they outscore the other team? How much do the Celtics outscore the other team when this guy's on the court versus off the court? I, I like this number a little better than pure net rating. I think it, at least when we're trying to evaluate the impact these guys have on the team, I think the on-off net's very helpful, right? Because if you're off the court and the team's playing a lot better, that's meaningful. That's meaningful, right? So Marcus Smart leads this by like a pretty significant margin, frankly. He's at 6.7. Horford's next at 5.4. Al, big Al, beauty eyes Al. Then Time Lord at 4.9. And then a massive cavernous other side of the world gap is Derek White at minus 2.5. So Derek White, we're killing teams when Derek White's on the court, but we're double killing them when he's not on the court. So he's actually, by this metric, like I don't think this is totally true, but by, by this metric, he's actually had a negative impact on the team. Which, you know, if I have to flip back to that offensive efficiency chart, like, eh, maybe not that crazy. Maybe not that crazy. So, um, Earlier turns, net ratings useless. The on-off net, though, uh, Marcus Smart, by far the best. By far the best. Then Al. Then Al. And then Rob. Okay, Raptor. Again, this is B-ball, or uh, 538s, all-in-one metric. They try to boil down all the stats, all the advanced stats, and tell you how good a player is. Derek White's is heavily impacted by his time as a spur. Heavily impacted by his time as a spur. Um, but he's actually in the lead at four. And then Horford at 3.7. Smart at 3.2. And then Time Lord's in last at 2.6. Okay. LeBron. This is, this is B-ball indexes all in one. Similar to Raptor. They try to boil down on-offs and all that. You know, regulate for your teammates that you play with and stuff. Blah, blah. This is a highly respected stat. People love this stat. I think it's really good. I think when I look at it, it matches my eye test, except there's something weird, something very weird going on here again. Smart at 1.93. Very good number. I'm Lord. 1.84. Also a very good number. Derek White. 1.18. Fair. Slight positive player. I think that's about right for Derek White. 1.18. Al Horford, 4.22. He's second to Tatum, and Tatum's like 4.38. He is right behind Jason Tatum in one of the most respected advanced stats in the world. What is going on, Al Horford? What is going on? Did, did you? I didn't expect this at all. At all. Okay. So LeBron says Al Horford's 4.22 LeBron's. That's nuts. That's nuts. We're sleeping on Al. Okay, next stat. ESPN's real plus minus. Again, tries to boil down that like on-off net. Tries to regulate for um, who you play with, essentially. So this is like uh, the on-off net, same stat, but it's saying, it's filtering out like, oh, this guy plays with Jason Tatum a lot, so his number... Should be a little bit lower. Well, you know, it's super complicated. I don't really understand it, but that's what the last number is trying to do. So smart, very respectable, 282. This is one where Time Lord grades out really well. He's, he's good. He's well above. I mean, we're dealing with a bunch of guys who are massive positives to their team. So the fact that Rob isn't like first or second in any of these is not an indictment on who he is a player. He's a great player. It's just smart. And I guess Al Horford are amazing role players. Really, truly. So, you know, I'm not trying to hate on time Lord at all, but time Lord grades out wonderfully in real plus minus 4.79 well ahead of smart. And then Derek White's going to bring up the rear here at 2.57. And then in first with a bullet, is Al Horford at 5.55. Way in first on RPM, way in first on LeBron, 
And then other than Derek White with the weird noisiness, in first for Raptor. Where does that leave us? So, like I said, I'll tell you where my bias was. I thought either Smart or Time Lord were going to pretty easily come out as our third best player. I was leaning leaning Smart, uh, especially since he's been great lately. But I can't believe I'm going to say this. I think Al Horford might be our third best player. I think he might be our third best player. Like, the numbers are indisputable. He's just as good at defense as all these guys, right? He's, I mean, comparably, if you're looking at role, the best passer, the second best passer. If you're looking at scoring, he's at least one or two. Him or Smart, well, I don't know. Time Lord's just so hard to grade with those efficiency numbers. Even if you put Time Lord first, you got Smart and Horford at two. And then these advanced numbers love him. Lo- like, I gasped when I looked these up. Gasped when I looked these up. Like, he's, other than on-off net, which I, lo- I think is a great number, and Smart's first there. So, man, I, I think it's Al Horford. I, I'm, like, legitimately shocked legitimately shot and let me tell you my process here like i don't i kind of rolling on the fly here like i look all this shit up and then i don't really compare it until i do the show and then i'm just like literally looking at these charts as i talk and you're just like listening to my thought process frankly like there's that's the only prep is i look up the numbers data dump and then i start recording and just talk i i'm like legitimately shocked but i i I think it's hard to say. I mean, I think the only guy with an argument is Marcus Smart because he's so important to the offense and he's got a higher volume load scoring and he's still efficient enough. And obviously his defense is ridiculous. Man, I'm going to say it. Okay, my definitive conclusion is that Al Horford is our third best player. I know. I'm shocked too. That's going to do it for the basketball portion of this show. If you do not play video games, just close the app, exit YouTube, period. I'm going to do five minutes on Elden Ring. Okay. Do not still listen if you don't play video, unless you want to just hear me ramble about a video game you don't know anything about. That's fine, too. <laughs> I've played video games. I'm, I'm about to be 35 next week. I've played video games for 30 years easily. This game is so hard. (laughs) Like, I just keep looking up tips. And I've never played, like, Bloodborne or uh, Soul, whatever. Uh, I know the name, but it's escaping me right now. Uh, I'm having, uh, like, I've not ever, like, I've always been pretty good. This game might end me. I'm like constantly looking up tips and trying to level up and like, uh, it is so hard, but it's awesome. I'm enjoying every second out of it. Holy crap. I haven't even left the first little like lime wire or whatever that world is. And I'm like finding new stuff every time I load the game up. It's incredible. But man, is it hard? Please. Celtics community. I need your help. What do I do? I'm a prisoner. I got some like goofy ass prisoner helmet. I look like Leo DiCaprio in that one movie. I just, I'm getting murdered. I'm out here getting murdered. There's like giants jumping on my head, like a bear appearing out of nowhere. That's a thousand feet tall. It's hard, man. It's hard. But I love it. It's a great game. It's a great game. If you're debating buying it, I would definitely recommend it. It's awesome. It's awesome. So anyway, okay. If you stuck around for that talk, thank you very much. But that is going to do it for this one. I will try to sneak a show in next week. May not happen. This is an extra long one anyway, so maybe I'll just let it ride. But we'll see. I got to write something soon, too. It's been too long for that. Um, All right. As always, I thank you all so much for listening. All the love, all the interactions. That's what 
That's why I do though. I ain't get paid. You know, I just do it because I want to talk Celtics with everybody. So thank you all so much. Please keep commenting. Um, and I will see you very, very soon.